The valley in question was originally known as the Deep Dale. Its historical significance started to formulate in around 1130 AD. At about this time, a baker from the nearby town of Derby apparently had a vision of the Blessed Virgin Mary, who told him that what she wanted more than almost anything else was for him to go to the Deep Dale, live in a cave and dedicate his life to praising the Lord God and serving her and her son in a solitary life. More of this later on, but you can hardly wait. Roll forwards to around 20 years and a whole bunch of Augustinian monks arrived in the area. But it was around 70 years after that, about 1204, the Premonstratensian canons founded the Abbey of St Mary. This proved to be a good move, as at one time the Abbey owned and managed about 24,000 acres of land in Derbyshire, Leicestershire and Nottinghamshire, a level of affluence which fluctuated from time to time, but which more or less continued until its dissolution in October of 1538. Now, a massive abbey left empty and deteriorating is a superb source of stone for building and the people in the immediate area are only as pious as they feel they need to be. So, bit by bit, the abbey disappeared almost totally until today all that we have left is a few mainly battered remains, chief amongst which is the 13th century arch of the east window which must have been an astonishing sight in its day, presumably with stained glass and an impressive sight even now. Further to the east of the window can be made out a raise in the ground level. This was at one time a part of the dam which held the brook back. This formed a fish pond which provided a winter food for the brothers. The Abbey Gatehouse also managed to survive and was the local lock-up in the 18th and 19th centuries. A mile or so to the north of the village is a hill upon which stands the still operational Cat and Fiddle Windmill. It's also known locally as Dale Windmill, standing as it does close to the village of Dale Abbey. It's a wooden post mill originally built in 1788. The stone roundhouse at its base with a wooden box like structure that houses the machinery set above it. Now all good hermits require a church in which to worship. It's obligatory and our hermit was no exception. The church which he's believed to have built was incorporated into the Abbey's infirmary and was dedicated to Jesus Christ and all of the saints, or Saints Church. The stonework by the hymn board is believed to be a part of the original construction. Unfortunately, at the time of writing, April of 2021, the church is closed for renovations and I couldn't get permission to go in and take pictures but that, as they say, is a subject for a future video. We get into a little bit of dodgy ground here as local legend has it that Alan a Dale of Robin Hood's Merry Men came from this village and that Robin Hood and Maid Marian were married here. This is doubtful as not only was Robin Hood a story but it wasn't written until, depending on which series of versions you wish to follow, somewhere between 1400 and 1833. They're also supposed to have been married at Edwinstow, and it's highly unlikely that they were married in both, if indeed either. The church was added to and repaired over the years, but it is thought to be virtually unchanged since 1634. Attached to this semi-detached church, yes, I did say a semi-detached church, is the farmhouse that was once intended for the verger, Verger's Farm. This was at one time a pub, which was demolished circa 1883 and later rebuilt. It's now, once again, a private home. A set of stone stairs ascends the south wall of the church. This was to allow the monks access to the inner balcony of the church. Q Rambo again. The Hermitage, remember that? 
is sited on a steep embankment and I can seriously attest to it being a steep embankment in appropriately enough Hermit's Wood and so to the previously mentioned Hermit. Although there is some confusion about whether or not his name is known, generally he is referred to as Cornelius, although this appears to be a reference to a character in the Bible, Cornelius the Centurion, who was referenced by the canon at Dale, a certain Matilda de Salicosa Mara of Lindsay, when she told the story of the baker, and she probably didn't have quite such a rough accent as I do. So, armed with his fervour and the promise of eternal happiness, he went to find the Deep Dale, which was obviously, but for some unexplained reason, God's chosen location in the entire world. As he wended his weary way towards this unknown location, he, purely by chance, as often happens in these tales, overheard a woman telling her daughter to take a herd of calves to Deep Dale. So, taking this monumental turn of serendipity in the spirit in which he fervently believed it had been delivered to him, he followed the young lady, as one would, to the place which was his ultimate destination. It was described as an extremely frightening marsh far from other human life. Deepdale is in fact about two and a half miles southeast of Stanley and about seven and a half miles from Derby, rough approximations. Clearly, it was a damp pasture land at the time, fed by the Sobrook and on its way to the Erewash. At the southern edge of this valley, he cut out a small rock house in a hillside and settled in to an existence of self-denial, discomfort and prayer. Until one day, as so often happens in legends from this period, Ralph Fitzgerald, the local lord, was out riding when he came across our hermit and was so impressed by him that he awarded him a tithe of his mill's proceeds, as one does under these circumstances. However, in his declining years, the hermit suffered all the torments of Satan. He was oft visited by demons, and so, in an effort to rid himself of these unfortunate visitations, he moved to the valley below and built himself a hut and an oratory, where he lived until his death. Well, as amazing and entertaining as this story is, it is only an aside to the views afforded by this beautiful little village tucked away off the main roads, lying as it does in relatively undisturbed countryside. The wood is a segment of ancient woodland, of the type which was once so common in England. At this time of year, the variety of wild flora is quite impressive, with ramsons, wild garlic, just budding, English bluebells shooting, and a swathe of wood anemone and celandine almost everywhere you look. And those are just the ones which I know, there are many others which, although familiar, I couldn't put a name to. Well, that's it for this time. Please feel free to look at the other videos on my channel and if you have any ideas for future videos, then I would love to hear them. I'm always looking around for subjects. If you enjoyed this, or indeed any of the others, then please like and subscribe. That way, you'll be sure not to miss any of them. Hopefully, I'll see you here next time. Till then, have fun and stay safe.